Okay, so we have our wall completely framed. We have the sheathing on. Um, we nailed the whole sheet, uh, whole sheeting off um, every six inches along the edges and every eight inches in the field. Uh, so now we're ready to start planning for actually putting this wall in place. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna do is um, just take like a step back and actually think this through. Um, this is one of the most dangerous parts when working with volunteers because uh, everybody just wants to lift it up, get it in place and go. Um, there's a lot of things that can actually go wrong if people aren't informed. Um, so what we're gonna do is just come up with a game plan and kind of talk to everybody, making sure that everybody is completely on the same page for when we start um, lifting this wall. So the first thing that we wanna do, we've already done this, um, but if you remember, we took those eight pennies and um, tacked this wall in place so we could have a nice straight bottom plate for our sheathing. We've already gone and taken a pry bar and popped all those nails and this wall is uh, free to move uh, now. So we're ready there. Um, the second thing we wanna take a look at is we've actually moved this wall up a little bit. Um, when we lift this wall into place, um, if we can kinda get in here, this bottom plate is gonna sit right on our floor um, sheathing. This sheathing, this wall sheathing is gonna overhang um, our floor framing. So what we want to be careful of is when we lift this wall that we're actually, we don't start too far um, in, or on top of this floor um, sheathing. If, if we lift this wall kind of right where it is now, this wall sheathing is actually going to hit this floor framing and it'll start popping nails and um, it's just going to get in the way. So we want to move this wall so um, we make sure we clear this floor framing with our wall sheathing um, so it doesn't pop off. The, Next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that everybody's on the same page with lifting the wall. Um, we have, if you remember, on our floor, we have that stairwell opening that we framed. We want to make sure that nobody's lifting that wall right above that stair opening. What's going to happen is somebody's in this middle here walking, they're going to be focusing on the wall, getting it into place, and they'll walk right into that stairwell opening. So we want to make sure that we have a person placed on this side of it, and a person placed on this side of it. For this size wall, two people pretty much um, would be enough to lift it into place. Um, after those two people are lifting this wall in place, you're gonna want a third person um, to be in charge of nailing off that bottom plate. So we have two lifters and one person making sure um, they're ready to nail the wall into place. The second thing we wanna uh, think about with those lifters is they wanna make sure um, that they know when they lift the wall in place that they're not going to let go of that wall until um, it's been fully braced and is ready to let go. So their main purpose is to lift the wall and to hold that wall until it's um, fully nailed off and braced. Um, they should make sure that everybody's gone to the bathroom and they're ready to hold the wall for a few minutes. Um, so. After we lift the wall in place, we're actually gonna put in some temporary bracing. That way um, we can actually get the wall close to where it's gonna be and we can lift all the other walls in place, nail them all together, get the wall straight, and then we'll be ready for our roof framing. So, are you guys, we have AJ and Azad here. Are you guys clear on what the plan is? You two are gonna be lifting and you're gonna be holding the wall until we're ready to um, let go of it after the bracing's put in place. Sound good? All right, so let's go ahead and move this wall down just a little bit. If we can move it a few inches, looks good here. Come back this side, looks good here. All right, so remember we were talking about making sure we have enough room for our sheathing. So it looks like we're good there and we are ready to start lifting. One final thought, um, when we're lifting a wall, um, the last danger that can really happen is um, we don't want anybody standing um, below the wall here. What happens is when these guys lift and if this bottom kicks out, this wall is basically gonna come shooting out and it could possibly hit anybody that's down here. So before you lift a wall, you always wanna make sure that everybody's clear and that nobody will be walking um, in that path um, when we lift the wall. The second, or kind of along the same lines, 
if we are lifting the wall and the wall happens to kick out, you want your lifters to be informed to just let the wall go and to not try to catch it. Um, again, that, that force, the wall will hopefully push away from them and they'll be fine if they just stay in place. Um, if they try to go under it and grab it, they'll be pulled with the wall and um, could be crushed. So if you start to feel the wall go, um, just, let, just let it go. Um, and we can reframe it and fix it later, at least everybody will be safe. So again, nobody's standing below the wall when we start to lift. Um, all right, we ready guys? Okay, so these guys are gonna start lifting it into place. Everybody's clear below the wall. Go ahead and lift. All right, perfect. So we have it into place now. Now what I'm going to do is we want the edge of this wall to be flush um, with our floor framing. So I'm gonna push it into place where it needs to go. Looks like we're nice and flush here. I'm gonna walk to this other side, double check that we're good over here. And it looks like we're spot on. So if we can come get a close up of this this shot right here, we got looking down, we can see we have our bottom plate sitting on our floor sheathing and we have our wall sheathing um, that's com coming down and um, gonna be sitting on top of our concrete here. So what we wanna focus on, remember we took all that time straightening, straightening our floor and our rim joist. So we should be able to just um, come through here and make sure that our wall sheathing is nice and tight to our floor joist and that way we know that our wall will be, become straight after we nail it off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here on this end and bring this wall into where it needs to be. And we might wanna bring it out, perfect. So it also helps to have a little bit more force. Um, a good tool to have is a dead blow hammer um, and this will help you um, bring the wall into place. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna come, but it keeps springing back. So what we can do is we can start a nail and drive that nail and that'll suck that wall nice and tight. And you can see we have a good strong connection. So we're gonna start on the one end here. We got this um, end secure. We're gonna come to the middle. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna make sure we're pushed all the way back. Looks like we are. Oop. We're using eights here. Gonna get a nail in here. All right, we're pushed all the way back and we'll come to this end. It looks like we're pretty, pretty close here. So we'll get a nail in here. All right, so we're nice and tight. Now you can see that our wall sheathing comes all the way down to our foundation and we have a nice clean line that we'll be able to start our siding on the foundation. Um, and now, now you can see one, um, that overlap, we can tie into that floor framing which is nice and secure to the foundation. Now our house isn't gonna come off of the foundation, it's nice and secure there. And when we start our siding down here, it overlaps this um, seam here creating that um, a watertight uh, joint over this, this seam here. Uh, so we got a lot going on um, with this overlapping siding here, or sheathing here. So now that we got it tacked and we know that it's pretty straight, what we'll uh, do now is come around to the other side here. And we're just gonna tack it into place with our 16 penny nails. Now, if you remember, we have a rim joist going all along the side here. Um, so when we um, start nailing here, we don't want to be nailing out towards the back of the floor plate here. We want to go in the back here so we know we're getting that rim joist. Eventually we're going to do a nail in every cavity, but right now we're just getting it in place.
Okay. We'll come to this side. And get one on the end here. All right, so now we know our bottom plate's secure and we want to then come and we're gonna take some scrap wood here. It doesn't matter what we have, we just wanna take some scrap. And we're going to um, prepare to uh, make some temporary bracing. So with the scrap, we're gonna get a couple um, two by fours here. And our goal is to tack one of these guys to the wall. And you wanna go uh, about anywhere from three quarters or higher on the wall. And the reason why we do that is this is gonna keep this wall plumb. So if we actually came down here and braced it, it would keep the wall in place, but it's not gonna keep the wall very straight or plumb. So we wanna go about three quarters or higher on the wall. Uh, so we'll just take a nail here and gonna tack it in place. Got a knot, of course. All right, so now we're going to get a level. And when we're plumbing a wall, uh, it's, it's uh, beneficial to try to get a longer level. A four foot level is um, pretty good, um, but if you have access to a six foot level, uh, that's even better. Um, the reason for that, um, if you had like one of those torpedo levels, some people just use like a two foot level and put it on the wall, what you're really doing is you're only leveling from that top of that level to the bottom of that level. Um, so if there were, was any curve in this wall, um, from here to here might be plumb, but the rest of the wall might not be plumb. So the more surface area you can get on that wall, the better. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna get this close. So we're pretty close right there. So um, we're gonna put our level down just for a second and we know that our brace is gonna come in about this location here. So we're gonna put a temporary block right on the floor and it's important to um, try to find a floor joist. You don't wanna put it in the middle of a bay because then you're just relying on this nail um, to hold this uh, wall in place. So if you get a nail into the floor joist, it's just a little bit stronger of a um, connection. So we got a floor joist right here. Gonna get a nail. here and in here. Again, don't worry, this is gonna come up later um, and we'll be able to do our floor covering there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a nail started. And you wanna make sure you hit the brace on the bottom. Now I got it just so it's coming through. I'm gonna leave my hammer there and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get this wall as close to plumb as I possibly can. So we're reading this horizontal one here. Now when reading a level, you can see I got this bubble. It's in between the two lines, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm plumb. I have this bubble touching this line. What you wanna do is you wanna center that bubble between these two lines. Is that, do you wanna push forward just a hair? All right, let's hold it right there. Got a good hold on it? Mm -hmm. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna tack it just a little bit. And I'm gonna come back and double check. And it looks like we're pretty good. We stayed um, right in the center there. So we'll come back. 
finish that nail and now this side is um, secure enough that a zod can let go. AJ's still holding on over there. So let's take another block over here. Okay, so we have our studs and we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did over here by tacking it into place about three quarters or higher on this wall. We'll put a temporary block on the floor and then we'll get it close to plumb and then tack it into place. And then after those two braces are in place, our wall will be secure enough that um, both guys can let go and we'll be able to start framing the other walls.